Now, as refugees continue to flee from Ukraine, some who have settled in different parts are fearful for their lives and the safety of their families that perhaps stayed behind. Joining us live now is a woman who wants her name to remain anonymous and same for her location. And I do not blame you. Good morning to you. Thank you for joining. Hi, good morning. Yeah. Um, can you please explain um, what you've been through in the last couple of weeks? Yeah, so, well, that's shortly, I can say this is a disaster. Um, like we, we had our back, let's say the back for the day, what if something happened, but nobody was believing that that will ever happen. Like I uh, lived in the capital of Ukraine, like, um, and um, what we've been through, let's say it's 5 a.m. on 24th of uh, February, we just woke up and I hear some sound like something is bombing. No news, nothing, nothing is shown, like not, nobody is saying anything. I just look into the groups. We have like uh, local news, uh, what's happening. And I hear people are saying like, yeah, we also heard this. And then in a couple of minutes, I got a call from a cousin saying like, it started, the war started. And like at this moment, that's like the worst thing what could ever happen, you know? My mom is crying, my dad is crying, like my dad is shocked, like what we do? I, I'm calling to my boyfriend and I'm saying like it's 4 a.m., like it started. And uh, like, let's pack. So we are packing, then we were a bit in mess because we had no idea what to do. That's the video on the way how we were driving and uh, that was horrible. We were escaping, like, let's say, at the beginning, just the serene was not there, no news yet. And then approximately at 8 p.m., at 8 a.m., it started, like, the war is here, like, the, the, the places were bombed. My parents, who have to sit now in the basement, we had quite a good, nice life. And now everybody's in a fear. We had to escape with a like younger generation just mm. away from this war. The, the video that we were showing there, sorry, uh, just to backtrack a little bit, some of the video, that is you escaping and you see these military tanks go, traveling in the yes. opposite direction toward where your, you and your family had lived. Now, your, your parents, um, can you talk about them? Because not everyone was able to leave. Unfortunately not. That was also a big discussion because uh, we left all the war started at 4 a.m. and we left approximately at 6 p.m. We were trying to go to the village. We have like a house there. So we were trying to drive there. All city was blocked already. Then we came back uh, to the house and uh, it was all discussion like, should we leave or should we stay? My parents quite old and they could not leave. And then it was kind of very difficult decision what to do. I had to save the rest of my family. I took uh, them with me. I called to my boyfriend and he said, okay, just get to my place because it was the place which is now bombed, bombed there. Like this is the front line. And if we stayed at least a little bit longer, we would never drive out of there. So all the like situation, but it was even then, it was quite scary. So my dad said, OK, I'm going to drive you to that place. It's uh, like uh, outside of Kiev. And it was a huge traffic jam on the roads to the west. So we were driving there uh, like maybe five minutes away or seven minutes. He's calling me, where are you? Where are you? Just hurry up. And I hear on the background, like, boom, you know, something is like, are you safe? What's happening? Where are you? What's what's going on? He's like, please get get here as soon as possible. I'm like, oh my God, my dad is here. He's driving me to this place and he has to drive back. And like, what to do? And there is bombing. And like, we arrived, we hear this noise, like my uh, we had a kid with me and uh, my uh, my family, like my sister. So we were just rush in rush, just sitting to the, his car. 
there because uh, like uh, it was everything prepared there mm. so we just sit there and like that by hugging him and uh, leaving well i was of course like we we left from that place there was like already shooting started because they just arrived on this day in the helicopters the descents and our army was fighting back so we were just driving through those places escaping it but if we did it in the morning next morning it would be already too late that road is already bombed oh. and yeah so we managed to to escape i i and can we oh, sorry sorry go ahead so yeah, so we were driving to the west side on, and we took quite, there were two roads, two main roads out of Kiev. So one was completely blocked, which is going to Lviv, which is another city in Kiev, uh, sorry, in Ukraine. And another one is next to Belarus. But he said, like, I know this place. I was driving a lot. Let's go there. I'm like, this is Belarus and they are also might attack. He's like, okay, let's go. Let's better f drive there. So on that road where those tanks are coming to the direction of Kia from the west, and we were filming them. We were always trying to see because firstly we saw a couple of tanks, like I can say this afterwards because it's no longer the secrecy because now it's better not to say where the techniques and so on, but then like some tanks were passing, then again machine, some cars, vehicles, and then again this huge uh, column of tanks and my, my niece, who is a baby, she's like, what is this? And the child is still, she is still don't understand. She's like the war, what? And and we were driving in the car that was already after passing the border. And, and how do you, sorry to interrupt you, but I, how do you explain that to such a young person as you are obviously trying to, to, to go through it yourself and you're explaining to your young niece what is going on, her home being destroyed? Yeah, we, we, we follow the news. We're explaining like, okay, we will take parents when and we're, if it's going to be possible, when, or we will come back because I'm willing to come back to Ukraine. That's my country. I was living there. I was, I can't believe that half of the city where I grew up, my school is damaged. It's like broken. And uh, how to explain to the kids, like, it's very difficult but when she was saying like i'm playing with the games she was playing to dolls and like okay this is russia and this is us and i'm fighting him and when you see this or when you see that the child is waking up just from the plane that is fine and she's like oh my god somebody is bombing no it's not and like we are here we are safe but what about other mm. kids who are stayed there who are still seeing this horrible she she saw just the beginning and like all my nation is suffering and this is disaster have to you, explain to the kid yeah have you sorry been, no no don't be sorry um have you been able to be in contact with um any of your family who has not been able to flee have you heard from them yes my i have some family in kharkiv which is completely bombarded and like my my relatives are saying like we just she, like my aunt went to the pharmacy and she said like i'm walking and then i hear the shooting i just run and and lay down on the ground so i'm in contact with her like uh, writing at least are you safe are you alive so this is very difficult yeah like we have families and it's difficult I want to ask you uh, one quick thing because you are in a safe place right now and in you are actually doing some work. Your background is in IT. I'm sure you're seeing a lot of misinformation out there uh, and you're, oh. you're combating fake news right now that you're oh. seeing some of these images. Um, you know, you're battling with it personally and you're doing it now professionally as well. What is that like? Yeah, yeah, let me tell you a little more. Like, what I can say for sure that people there they are so much brainwashed that even my family members who live in Russia, who was raised here, born here, and they are talking about some fascists or something. This is incredible to hear from, we have the same background, the same 
country we raised, but you just moved there and you're being brainwashed for years. And then you're telling me that uh, something that we are doing it by ourselves. Like, um, that was just incredible because I blocked two of my cousins. They are saying, okay, you're sitting in the basement, so what? They don't touch uh, civilians. Seriously, look to the videos. I'm sharing the videos. I'm sharing this all. Like, open your eyes. This is Russian soldiers, and our people are taking them into the, uh, like, the hostage. They are making videos. Like, look, this is all fake. So even if my family don't hear this, I don't know how to knock to the other people who are completely brainwashed. What we are doing, we're just trying like to hack the website. Mm -hmm. We're attacking, we're doing DDoS, and not only us Ukrainians, yes. the whole world is doing now. We're trying to show those people to knock to them the reality, like the reality of what my, what I was filming, what my friends were filming, like that I had to escape from my country to here just because of the bombing and I'm calling to my family all the time, are you safe? This is your reality so that you are living. I, I apologize because we, we have run out of time, but I want to thank you. I want to thank you for sharing your experience. I, I am praying for your family who was not able to leave, to flee. Uh, I pray for your safety and um, please do stay in touch with us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye. Uh, thank you. Um, just one of many incredible stories we know. Uh, over a million people estimated by the UN have fled. Uh, and we will effort to bring you all of these stories here on Breakfast Television.